Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus, uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism or protecting communism. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of them. Well, I mean, trilateral British. Commission. A trilateral Council Commission, on Council Relations. on Foreign Relations. State here's Department, I suppose. Well, let's face it, they've dominated the State Department for 40 years, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much openly All so. right, but what are they trying to do? Come well, to their now. objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers in the Council on Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we're going to have a lot of un unanswered questions, that you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about a dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly uh, you're familiar with the local professor, Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the Who, value. What is well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas. The whole, er be around. The whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. Bill Casey is a part of this conspiracy well, that's trying to Bill bring Casey, about world before, government. Before he became CIA, one of his big jobs was aiding in the transfer of technology and uh, goods and so forth to the Soviet Union, uh, helping the Camera River Project, the Export-Import Bank. Oh, helping to finance is these the things. Export Import Bank part of the conspiracy? I think the, I'm the whole to get drive the of the that the, the fact that the American people have been tapped steadily, especially since World War II, to finance their enemies and to have the massive technology transfer to those uh, well, who I were agree with you. You know that from the Braden Doctrine in the, in the agency, uh, which uh, you're very familiar with, and the feeling that uh, we must somehow subsidize the, quote, non-communist left. Uh, that's among our so-called allies. Braden was and in country the after country, left? that turned out to be the communists, mm -hmm. the crypto-communists masquerading yeah, as that's non Mr. That's if people quietly working together for evil objectives, two or more, that by definition is a conspiracy. You have by their own admission, you look at the tragedy and hope by Professor Carol Quigley, who was a member of this elitist group. He says, sure, we've been working this. Sure, we've been collaborating with communism. Yes, we're working for a global accommodation. Yes, we're working for world government. The only thing I object to is that we have kept it a secret. And I think we've gone so far along, we should come out and say, I'll bet you a dollar and a half that Bill Casey doesn't know who Professor Quigley is. I don't. He's at Georgetown well, a number of years uh, ago. He, he, he died a couple of years ago, and he wrote The Tragedy and Hope. He's a very noted member of, the, of your club, Tom. Well, I'll tell you what, what you ought to do is go back and look at your founder, Edward Mandel House, because he wrote the book Philip Drew Administrator. And Colonel in this, House. Colonel House said that what he envisioned for the world was a world government along socialist lines as envisioned by Karl Marx. Now, that's, mm -hmm. that's your leader. Uh -huh. Tom, so you got to go back to the beginning. Well, his leader was party. Woodrow Wilson. Do you think he was a communist? No, I think character? Woodrow Wilson uh, was his follower. Uh, I think Edward Mandel House dominated Wilson, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Edward Mandel House, uh, that was, uh, we ought to make that clear, he was Colonel President House. Wilson's uh, principal Alter, alter ego, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, but there is, has been, unfortunately, in the West, uh, an element. Uh, there are good members in the Council on Foreign Relations, dedicated patriotic people. You've had Sproul Braden, who was a member of the Council of the Birch Society, Bill Buckley, and Council on Foreign Relations. You've got some dedicated people, but the driving forces have very clearly been willing to collaborate, subsidize, work for technology transfer for what they feel is some type of an accommodation and merger. And I, I submit this would be a disaster for the American Republic.